What is up? What's up? How we doing? Um, talking about play today. I'm very excited to talk about play. Um, and I'm going to, you know, try to crank up the energy for this one, right? Just to give the contrast between the sleep video that I did and the play energy or in this play energy video. Um, a couple of you mentioned that the, the energy in the sleep video really helped you understand what that animal was trying to do. And so I'm going to try to do the same thing for this animal as well. Um, now, the reason that I can do that for sleep and for play a little bit more easily than for consume and for blast is because play and sleep are energy animals. Consume and blast are information animals. Very briefly, here is what that means. Um, play and sleep are doubling up on either introverted or extroverted functions. Right, so sleep, you have your introverted observer, your NI or your SI, and your introverted decider, your TI or your FI talking to each other, right? So there's four different ways to have sleep. Play is the opposite. It is your two extroverted functions talking to each other. So that's your OE and your DE. So your SE or your NE and your TE and your FE talking to each other, right? So the reason why that creates what in uh, what objective personality calls an energy animal is because you're not getting that balance, right? So one of the big criticisms of Myers-Briggs on the fucking laundry list of criticisms about it um, is that very first letter, right? The introvert versus extrovert, right? Are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? Um, People are like, well, everybody does everything. I am both. And honestly, you know, in, in Myers-Briggs land, that's kind of true, right? Because everybody in Myers-Briggs is either a blaster or a consumer, right? Lead blast or lead consume. Um, all EJs and all IJs are lead blast with their savior NI and their savior OI and their savior DE. And all um, EPs and IPs are all lead consume, right? With their OE and their DI, right? So if you are a standard Myers Briggs type, then yes, you should feel like you are a little bit of an ambivert. Absolutely. It would be weird if you didn't, honestly, right? Like, if, again, unless you were so wildly imbalanced in just your first function that you're like, yep, I am an extrovert because my TE is just banging on heads all goddamn day. Yeah, yeah, the NI, yeah, it's a savior, but it's whatever. It's all about the TE, right? If you're that imbalanced, then maybe. But like, generally speaking, if you're lead blast or lead consume, you will almost invariably feel like you are somewhere in the middle and on the spectrum, right? Of like, well, ambivert-ish sort of towards the middle right, right? Again, give or take, it's always a spectrum, whatever, whatever. But with play and sleep, once you get that lead function doubling up somewhere, now you're like, okay, that dude is an introvert, Right. So like someone like Dave, even though he has like he's an INTJ, yes, he has double activated TE, but his savior animals are his his savior, his lead, sorry, his lead function uh is NI. His lead animal is sleep. And his two savior functions are sleep and a blast, right? So he's pretty all in on that NI FI loop right? It is very, very difficult to call Dave an extrovert once you get to know him even a little bit, right? Because if you, if you like follow him around the house and like actually see what he is like, he is predominantly introverted, right? His decider is introverted, his savior decider is introverted, and his savior observer is introverted. He's got a He's got a lot of introversion happening, right? 
where it gets trickier, right, is when you have this like play and sleep in the middle, but it happens to be strong, right? So because we're talking about play, uh, I'm just going to use myself as an example. I am a I'm a weird corner case. Uh, even among glass lizards, I am a weird corner case that like. I'm an INTJ, but I am blast, then play, then consume, and my sleep is last, right? So I'm doubling up on my play, even though my first function is an introverted function, right? So play has a has a weirdly special place in my heart um, because that is the thing that allows me to bridge the gap between like honestly play is what in some ways in some ways keeps me a little balanced right it's definitely wrecked my life in lots and lots of ways um but that i think is more due to the fact that i have st play right my se and my te and it's that i was all in on the st and missing the nf more than i was all in on the play side of it Right. So with play, if it seems chaotic, it's because it is. Right. Just straight up. When somebody is save your play and in a play state and doing the play thing, they are fucking a mile a minute. Like not not literally fucking a mile a minute. Probably. I would hope not. That feels painful. But like they are they are go, 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 go. And they're not stopping to actually get anything started, right? So play, it does not want to get things started. It does not want to kick the ball in from, you know, from um, from out of bounds, right? doesn't want to do it. Because when you're doing that, now you have to like stop and think and plan. And planning is one of the many enemies, is one of the two enemies, not many, one of the two enemies of play is planning because planning ties into your OI and play has OE. Those two complement each other, but that also means that they butt heads pretty often, right? So somebody would save your play, right? They are generally going to want to be in the thick of it, right? They want to be boots on the ground and depending on what other animals they have that may determine what role they want to play when they're on the field um a really good analogy uh is you know our buddy tom brady the man is a good quarterback he just is right the man is fantastic he to me again i have no idea what type he is i've never studied him i don't i have no idea could not even begin to speculate but he is very, very, very good at playing. He's very, very, very good at playing. Because what play requires him to do is it requires him to connect with another um, with another player on the team, right? He's throwing the ball. He's not throwing it to himself. And he's not the kind of quarterback that's like super mo. Like he's not Michael Vick. He's not running around trying to like make big dynamic plays himself. He is very, very, very much the center snaps the ball to me. I pass it to somebody else, right? That's, that's his play style. If you're a football expert and I'm wrong, please tell me, but that's, that is what I have observed, right? Um, so that's certain that's like the DE component of play that you can sort of watch and, and mimic and sort of try to learn from. There's also the OE component that Tom Brady also has, which is why he's fucking fantastic, right? Because what will happen is he'll talk with the offensive coordinator, right? And the head coach. And there's like, all right, so for this next series of downs, um, we're gonna try to make a big explosive play if we can on you know second or third down. Um, if we have to just take a first down, right. If you just want to get it 10 yards, that's fine. But I think this is given the clock and the field position, 
this is the time where we can take a, take a risk, um, take a chance and break away, so to speak, right? And really try to make a big dynamic play. Cool. Tom Brady then goes onto the field, or I guess he's on the field listening through headsets because technology. And his job is then to go look at look at the plays that he has and to go, okay, given the circumstances, looking around, here is what here's the play that I think we should run right now, right? So he's planning in a sense, right? But he is planning in, in a very in kind of a minimal way in this particular context, right? Because what'll happen is he'll he'll call out a play, he'll get the ball. Generally speaking, he then has to look and see which receiver is open, right? If it's a running play, well, then, you know, obviously he's going to give it to the running back and the running back is going to do his thing. But if it's a passing play, right, if they're trying to make, a again, a big dynamic play, he's going to take the ball, back up, survey the field, and be like, okay, who is open right now? Like, let me let me gather these, the possibilities, the data, the people on the field. Let me gather all of this information so that I can make the best decision possible about who I can DE throw it to, right? And I think that if you can get that sort of mindset, you know, sort of think about that as play, because a lot of times we think of play like basketball. And that's absolutely a version of play, no question. And that's a that's certainly a more um, rudimentary, I guess, um, way of looking at play, where it's, I have the ball. Now you have the ball. Now you have the ball. And I give it to the center and the center passes it to the forward and the forward goes for the basket, right? I don't really know basketball, but like generally speaking, right? There's a lot of, there's a lot of passing. Uh, and then eventually someone's going to take the shot and then there's some more passing and then someone's going to take the shot and then they're going to steal the ball and then pass back and forth, right? There's a lot of passing in basketball, but I think that you can even go one layer deeper. And I think that it's worth looking at that, uh, American football example um, as another form of play because to be successful uh, whatever position you are on the football field you have to be able to like do both because if Tom Brady goes in there he's like all right I have a plan and I'm gonna blast it to uh, Danny Amendola right well, if Danny Amendola is being covered, well, then he's got a real problem because now he's going to get intercepted because he didn't do any gathering. And had he gathered, he would have been like, oh, my buddy Wes is like super open. Yeah, I'm just going to give it to him. I know that I originally planned to give it to Danny. Um, but yeah, no, I'm just going to I'm just going to give it to to Wes get the first down, scrap the plan, and keep the ball moving. I think that's sort of the, the second component of play. Play is extraordinarily willing to scrap the plan. And this is why it holds sort of a weird, funky, special place in my heart, because I am a lead-ass planner, right? I am lead OI. But my double activated play, which is also one of my saviors, is really good at surveying the field and being like, nah, bad plan, bad plan, scrap it, do something else, right? And what, dis what distinguishes play from consume in that sense is that DE versus DI, right? So you're consume, you have DI m hanging out with your OE. Right. So you're going to be wanting to scrap the plan in the interest of doing what you want to do or, you know, living your truth or whatever. Right. It's going to be very D.I. fuck the tribe centric when you scrap the plan from a consume standpoint. Right. When you fuck the plan from a play standpoint. Now you're trying to get everybody else on board. Whereas, 
hey guys, I know we agreed to do this thing, but like it ain't gonna work, right? Uh, the, the movie is sold out. So we gotta make a new plan that all of us can get on board with, right? And then you can make a plan or not or do whatever, but play is the one that's responsible for going, okay, the plan doesn't work for all of us and we need to do something different, right? And that's, boy, I tell you what, man, I'm not, I try not to be biased uh, for or against functions, but man, having access to play is extraordinarily useful in life. Like, oh man, that shit helps. Um, and looking at a lot of the people who I think are, are really successful, uh, certainly a lot of the people that I look up to, um, a lot of them have really strong play. And part of that is just that like, I see myself in them and whatever, whatever. But objective results wise, play gets shit done. Blast gets things started. But play is the thing that keeps the momentum going and actually where you can build on the work that you have started to do, right? And when you're getting that ping back, now you are like, you're building your tribe, you're, you're gathering more possibilities, you can narrow them down later, but now you have something to narrow down, right? Now you can go, all right, here's a good example. So um, I am in, I'm in an improv class, um, you know, sort of on the, the TV comedy improv track here in LA, right? Well, doing improv means that you, every week, you, you're in class with a bunch of different people, um, you go see shows, uh, you perform in shows, right? So all of that is really important play kind of research, right? Where at the beginning, if I don't make an effort to be in scenes with every single person in class, I'm gonna have no idea who I gel with and who I don't, right? And there are certain people who right away, I was like, yes, okay, you and I, fucking comedy gold, right? We can do anything, anytime, we're good, right? If I only did scenes with that one person, A, that would be impractical because they, it's it's all random and it's sort of spontaneous and you never really know who you're going to be in a scene with until you're in the scene, right? But also, if I don't make an effort to be in as many scenes with as many different people as possible during the learning process, now I'm not going to understand my own comedic instincts as well. I'm not going to understand other people's comedic instincts. I'm not going to be able to handle curveballs as well, right? Because again, you, you kind of never know when you're doing improv, what's going to come out of the other person's mouth. And the more of a variety you can have in a, you know, sort of a, a lab environment, a classroom environment, when you actually get on stage, you can go, oh, right. Yes. I've, again, you're not going to want to intellectualize it this much, but theoretically you can go, Oh yeah, no, I, I understand that move. Yes, I have seen something like this before. Here is like an organic emotional response to it or whatever your process is, right? But the idea is play is really, 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 really helpful because it helps you diversify your points of view, right? Even for a blaster, Play can be really, really helpful. And especially, look, if you're a blaster like me, um, who is lead OI rather than lead DE, like, you know, an ENTJ or an ESTJ, something like that, play becomes even more important for you because now it's like, okay, you got the, you got the OI and the DE, you got the blasting going on, that's great, but you need to gather shit so that you don't sound like a douchebag 
and a know-it-all. Well, a really, really easy way to access that if you have Blast is through play, right? Is being able to go, okay, so I, for me, because right, INTJ, so I go, I did the N-I-T-E thing. I got to gather. Mm. Jumping straight to consume seems hard. So I'm going to use play as a way to like get around the horn, right? And to like, kind of try and turn that corner because eventually I do want to be all in on the, on the SE gathering, if that's the thing that I want to do. But for me, like if you're, if you are a blaster trying to get to consume play, I think play is a really, really effective way to do it. Um, because now you're going sort of introverted function, extroverted function, extrovert, extrovert, Okay, now, right, that's going to be easier than saying introverted, extroverted. Now I'm going to go double introverted. Now introvert, extroverted. And now solidly in the OE gather. I don't know. That seems hard. It seems like a, like an unnecessary number of steps if that is your goal, right? So certainly for me as an IJ, any sort of play is going to be very, very useful, right, for me. So in all these videos, uh, I talk about voids and I talk about clarity. Um, in this case, I want to start with clarity because I think it's a harder concept to grok um, when it comes to play because we tend to think of clarity in OI terms, right? Um, we think of clarity as like, yes, these instructions are clear. I have my marching orders. I know how this person feels about me. She really likes me. She wants my head on a platter. Great, right? That feels very OI driven, at least to me, right? And I think that the way that we communicate clarity, when we talk about you need to be clear about what it is that you want or what it is that we're doing, culturally, our response to that is, right, we're too diffuse. We have to narrow down and just say one thing, right? But play can also have a kind of clarity to it, right? A really, really good example of someone who I think uh, is a, is has a healthy savior play at this point in his life uh, is my man, Andy Samberg. So Andy Samberg, I bring him up a lot because he's like my bizarro type twin. So we're both audio, we're both MF, right? Masculine sensory, feminine extrovert decider, both single observers, both uh, doubling up on play and sleep last, right? Except he's an EP and I'm an IJ. So that's why I like him as, as an example. Um, and he is somebody that I've, I've learned a lot from watching his arc. And honestly, you could even see it in his hair. Look at pictures of Andy Samberg um, when he was doing Hot Rod, right? If you want to go back even a little further than that, um, check out his earlier um, like SNL digital, sh digital short videos. Um, he wasn't into too many of those. Um, but the, the poster for Hot Rod, um, I'll see if I can post it in the comments below. Uh, I might have to do this afterward like his hair is fucking all over the place right i mean it's it's just bananas uh let's see um open image a new tab let's see if we can paste this guy i'm gonna be really sad if this doesn't work let's see here we go right look at this guy Look at this ridiculous, ridiculous, chaotic ESFP human, right? And then if you look at him, his hair in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, right? So now he's, you know, now he's in his 40s. Uh, this is what he looks like now. It's just, I mean, look at, look at this guy. Oh, put an image in the tab. Boop and the bop. Boom. Like, come on now. What are you doing? What are you doing? 
Oh, it's too long. Okay, let me see if I can find a different one. But the point is, is that he's just, he's clearly changed so, so, so much. Um, and I think that that's, I think that that is indicative of the fact that he has learned to embrace his demons. He's learned to embrace the part of himself that needs structure, that needs organization, right? And in the second picture, like, I don't know, he's kind of given me some uh, little, little bit of, little bit of IJ realness. I like, right? It's not totally, you know, buzz cut, right? He's not James Clear. He's, there's a little, there's a little shag, right? There's a little, little twinkle in his eye, right? He's still got that ESFP mood going on, but like. He's he's definitely cleaned up, and I think that that's I, that's to me is very inspiring, especially with somebody who has such strong play energy as he does, to be able to really taper that down quite literally. Um, I think is very very cool. Um, but I bring up Andy in particular because there is so much clarity in his humor. Now, some of that comes from the fact that it's st humor, right? And then I threw it on the ground right? There's nothing unclear about what that sketch is about, right? I'm on a boat. I just had sex, right? No ambiguity, none whatsoever. But it's also really clear in that, like in the, in the, um, in the I'm on a boat sketch, right? It's really clear what it is that we are gathering, right? Again, he has masculine sensory that helps to an extent, but watch those videos. Watch how it's like, oh great! I like I know what game we are playing. We are playing the what are wacky nautical things for four minutes game, right? Let's gather as many wacky nautical things as possible, right? Same with I just had sex. It's let me think of all of the different fun ways that we can embarrass the woman that that I just had, right? The dynamic is, I'm a happy dude, I just had sex. And you look at her face and she's like, oh my God, I just had sex with that guy. And it's, and it's like, there's a goofball energy to it because he's MF, but it's really, really clear what game we're playing, what things we're gathering and what we're trying to steer towards and what, like how we are passing the ball back and forth, right? That's very, very clear. The void that play leaves, speaking from experience, um, is the slow the fuck down energy. Sleep just doesn't have that. Or, 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 or somebody with, with low sleep has to work incredibly hard to slow down. So if you're all in on your play, it means that you are all in on new shit and all in on playing with the tribe and pinging off of other various tribe members, right? That's cool and great and fine and whatever, but if you if that play isn't informed by um, your own processing, setting boundaries that work for you, uh, in the words of our buddy Ed Milet, making promises to yourself, then that play is just fucking all over the place. Right, and it's really, really easy, I think, for play to spin out of control. Um, and I think that one of the big dangers of having save your play, and it's certainly something that I've experienced. Not saying that everybody's experience is universal. Um, we live in an exceptionally play-driven time, right? Um, it's very much sleep is not a priority. Um, especially with social media, um, whether it's YouTube or Instagram or whatever, right? It, we've gotten a little better about it, but there is still a vibe of how many followers do you have? How much content are you putting out? You know, how much new shit are you gathering with your tribe members you know, how much networking are you doing? Are you always on, are you always hustling? Are you always on the grind? 
that I think is, it's something that is much more pervasive in our culture. And if you have savior that, it's really easy to run off a goddamn cliff because like there's nothing stopping you culturally from hustling 24 seven, right? We have the sum of human information in our pockets all the time. Like you can easily spend 14 hours a day on your phone, on Instagram, doing productive shit. I say, I put productive in quotes, but like you can be um, researching new, like uh, hashtag combinations, putting out content, um, taking pictures of yourself, having commentary, walking around, filming your day, commenting on other people's stuff, um, sending out, you know, sliding into a couple of DMs if you're trying to network with somebody genitally, obviously. Like there are so many things that you can be doing that are play centric that you're rewarded for doing. And it's very, very easy to forget or to feel like you do not have the luxury of sleep. So for those of you with save your play, I have only this to say to you, slow the fuck down, calm yourself. You're fine. The world is not that fast. Don't fall into the trap that I did of like thinking you have to be on all of the time. You do not. You very, very do not. Um, because even in the short term, that's going to screw you up, let alone the long, long term, right? Slow down. You're good. Say no to shit because learning how to say no and learning how to like narrow down while you're still generating energy. Now you're, now you're playing your sleep. Now they're like, now they're tossing the ball back and forth and like play will gather something right with the tribe. Like, Hey, I just learned this new thing from that other tribe member. Check it out. And then sleep can be like, you know what? I dig it. And then sleep can do its thing. And then, play takes something else is like hey sleep check out this and then sleeps like that's fucking what no stop throw that away then plays like okay and then play bounces along and then gathers some more shit and throws it to sleep and sleep chews on it and is like that or mm, i like this right and then and now we have this sort of back and forth symbiosis uh where both animals are actually helping each other instead of just Play doing all this gathery shit and sleep, you know, like play will throw something at sleep. And then before sleep has a chance to actually process it, play just keeps throwing shit at it and sleep's like, wait, oh my God, stop. <sighs> we're doing the Muppets here. We're, we're doing hand Muppets. That's just the thing that's happening for the last two minutes of this video, right? And if you are save your sleep, right? Um, if you are... If you are the Ernie, sorry, if you are the Bert in Bert and Ernie, then you are save your sleep. Ernie, fucking save your play to hell. God damn it, Ernie. I, weirdly, I'm more of a Bert just because of my lead OI, but um, right, you got the Bert and Ernie dynamic. If Bert gets to drive all the time, then nothing happens, right? Because then all this gathering is, you know, because here's the thing. Once in a while, once in a while, Ernie has a good idea. It breaks my heart. I wish Ernie were just a piece of shit. Uh, I wish he were just a dumbass, but he's not. Um, he does have good ideas sometimes. I don't know what to tell you. And Bert, because they're buddies, uh, knows that he has to like listen to Ernie more often than not, just because, you know, I don't know. Sometimes Ernie has good ideas. Sometimes uh, Ernie does fun shit. Ernie brings joy and bubbliness and levity into Bert's sad life, right? And what I love so much about that dynamic is that there really is a mutual respect, right? There's a great, uh, there's a great meme of like Ernie with like a fruit, had 
on. It's something ridiculous. And Bert's just like staring at the camera and the captain's like, um, Bert sees Ernie's hat. Bert chooses not to acknowledge Ernie's hat because uh, Bert knows that that's just opening the door to some nonsense, right? And if sleep gets to do that too much, well, now play is going to not only feel deflated, it's not going to get better at playing. It's not going to get better at gathering because that is also a skill, right? It's not just the willy-nilly, right? If play can have like a little bit of direction, it's like the, the parameters are wide, but they are still there. Now play can be like, oh, great. Okay, cool. I know that if I gather within these parameters, 80% of what I get is going to be cool and useful and give me that DE tribe validation, right? Because again, it's also part of play. It's not just DI consume. Rather than if there's no parameters, well, now maybe 40% of what I gather is going to be helpful to that tribe member. Um, but, oh, if I can get a little bit of a parameter, that means I, get, I go from 40 to 80 overnight with like very little uh, change and very few restrictions, <laughs> fucking sign me up. All right, that's all I got for today. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below. I do try to answer as many comments as I can. Um, let me know what you think in the comments, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.